All right, um, sixth grade socials, and welcome to this flipped lesson. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the move from the Paleolithic era to the Neolithic era. One big change for these early humans was going from being hunting and gathering societies uh, to becoming more stable and less nomadic societies, meaning that they actually formed some civilizations and started to kind of stay in one place at the same time. They still hunt and they still gather, but as we look at the Paleolithic uh, era changing into the Neolithic era, one big part of it we're going to talk about is the agricultural revolution. All right, take a look at this picture here. Um, this would be a great secondary source, and I want you to think for a second why this would be secondary. But this would be a great secondary source, giving us an idea of how early humans lived in the Paleolithic age. You can see that you have these men and this young boy looks like they've hunted an animal um, you know preparing walking off to prepare you, you've got these women using fire to cook the meat uh, we're going to talk this week about how important fire was especially in preparing the meat when uh, the early humans started to cook their food and eat it they actually began to get more protein out of their food and uh, other supplements towards their diet which helped their brain increase in size which helped the early human advance but the one thing that really stands out as in this source as a paleolithic secondary source is these temporary looks of housing these tent type housing uh, you know this group here would have been more likely to hunt their next meal and packed up and moved as the herd moved along now here's an example of a secondary source for the neolithic age notice that there's starting to be some advancements uh, probably a little glorified advancement of the Neolithic age in this picture but you're starting to see homes permanent settlements farming as animals have been domesticated here's a man walking with uh, a dog we're going to talk about this week the significance of domestication uh, prior to the Neolithic age and domestication uh, animals such as canines or dogs uh, were actually kind of enemy to the early human because the early human was a part of their food chain. Uh, when the early human learned how to relate to and domesticate the dog, it became an ally to the early human, actually helping protect the early human from other predators. So as we look at our textbook, and you are more than welcome to pause uh, if you want to read the uh, page here from the textbook we'll be using the textbook this week uh, in class uh, every day um, but as we look at the textbook lesson two is about the agricultural revolution and we're going to talk about the significance when um, farming became an important part of the neolithic age how did that make a difference and how the paleolithic people lived changing them into neolithic or uh, as your archaeology or archaeologists study uh, how did farming change people's lives that that's a question that we're going to answer this week so you want to make sure that's something that you're focused on and we're going to talk about this term domestication animals transported goods they provided meat milk and wool once they could you know, domesticate these animals and they didn't have to chase them as much. They found that different ways to help the population, the animal population, because they were such a great resource. Uh, the, the change in the way people lived during this time period, we changed the time period from Paleolithic to Neolithic. The, world, the word Neolithic is Greek from New Stone, meaning this is the New Stone Age. One resource that we're going to begin looking at in the text is some of the uh, location of early farming and uh, what that early farming brought to the Neolithic age. But if you look at this map of the world here, you can see the, uh, the different products throughout the world where they grew uh, and where the Neolithic early humans learned how to grow these things, how to farm these items. Now, as we advance through time, these will become items that literally people will uh, 
uh, desire from across the world. Um, you know, for example, you can see here in South America the uh, the growth of cotton. Cotton is a huge element that's a big part of the American Civil War. Um, so as time progresses and the world actually seems to become smaller as we come more and more in contact with each other, the early farming uh, displayed on this map is going to be something we're going to discuss this week with its importance. As we wrap things up for this lesson, uh, a couple things to think about. How do you think the Neolithic age helped to advance mankind? That's one of the big uh, questions we're going to look at this week as we talk about some of the details of what mankind did during the Neolithic age. And also, why was domestication of animals so significant and so important? And just to look ahead for you tomorrow, uh, Monday, September the 8th, when you come into class, we're going to uh, use those locations again from GeoGuessr. And you're going to be talking with the people at your table about what they saw versus what you saw when you studied those sites, uh, pretending to be in the role of an archaeologist. So you can kind of see what we're going to be working on a little bit tomorrow. And then we're also going to start looking at how written history um, which comes after the Neolithic period, we're going to start seeing how written history makes such a significant um, difference in what we know about these people. We're going to also start studying artifacts like cave drawings this week to uh, talk about how archaeologists would take that information to interpret it to get a better understanding of these people and how they lived. If you get a chance, you may want to uh, show this to your parents to give them a good idea of what you guys have been working on in terms of you becoming archaeologists. Um, so click on the GeoGuessr uh, link. And won't you take them on a tour of all the GeoGuessr sites that you've gone to, starting with Stonehenge. You can talk a little bit about what your thoughts were about Stonehenge. And, you know, it'd be interesting to get a perspective from them. All right, well... We will see you uh, tomorrow in class and uh, need to watch this video by Wednesday.